Oh, bonjour, dickheads. Welcome back to another episode of my live podcast, FTW, uh, f- The Wall. Um, it's, where I, uh, it's where I chat to you. What am I talking about? I chat to you live on YouTube uh, every Monday, 9 p.m. French time, and uh, debrief the shows that I've done, talk about upcoming shows, talk to you about languages. We have fun with that kind of stuff. Hey, welcome to the show. It's Monday, November the 20th. Um, 9 p.m. And uh, sorry, I wasn't available last week, ladies and gentlemen. The show, uh, uh, this show, uh, wasn't, I I wasn't able to do the live last week because I was in Edmonton in Canada and the signal, uh, the Wi-Fi wasn't strong enough in my hotel room to uh, do a live stream uh, of any decent quality. So we had to do it this week and oh, hasn't the last two weeks been interesting. Hasn't, haven't, Paul. Speak proper English. Um, So, uh, I mean, let's just go through it. Last time we spoke to each other, this time two weeks, the next day, uh, uh, I was in Montreal two weeks ago uh, at my friend Rolly's house, who is my fellow comedian, who opened for me for three of the shows that we did in Canada. We did Ottawa, uh, was the next day, was Tuesday after the live. Uh, then we did Quebec, then we did Montreal, then we had two days off, then we went to Toronto, uh, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver, uh, one day off, and then Bordeaux in France. And oh, oh, were they some of the best shows of the whole tour and some of the worst. And some of you were there. Um, uh, so, uh, Melanie, thanks for the Montreal show. Yeah, Melanie, the Montreal show, I am not exaggerating, was the best show that I have ever done in my entire seven years of doing this full time. It was, I'm sorry, Strasbourg, Strasbourg, you guys were the best up until now, but Montreal just took it to another level. But before we did Montreal, we did Ottawa, which was a great show. Ottawa Uh, weirdly, an amazing show. I wasn't expecting anything from the show in Ottawa. Let me show you the venue in Ottawa. It was basically like, um, what do you call it? Like a a, a conference center of some sort. Here's the picture of the, of the venue in, in Ottawa, sorry. It was kind of like a, a a centre culturel and they're always shit. There's my manager, Adam, uh, looking gorgeous as usual. (laughs) But yeah, the room didn't inspire a good show. I was like, oh God, this is not going to be great. But the audience were amazing. We drove two hours uh, to Ottawa, uh, did the show and then drove back two hours back to Montreal to sleep in Montreal. Um, And uh, it was fun. We had karaoke. We did a whole karaoke session on the way back in the car, screaming at the top of our lungs. I lost my voice uh, and my voice has only just come back. My voice has been shit for the past uh, couple of of days. Um, So Ottawa was great. Quebec, the next day, the city of Quebec, uh, honestly, it was kind of the opposite. The room was amazing. It looked incredible. Um, Here's the room uh, in, 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 in Quebec. I mean, it was, it has a brick wall on the back. It's one of those theatres. Um, and uh, it, 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 it should have been an amazing show. But for some reason, the audience in Quebec, as many people have told me since, are, they're a bit quiet. They're a bit timid. Also, what didn't help, I think, is that the, the venue has these tables. And the tables are like tables of four, tables of six, all across the venue. And the problem is, if you've only bought two tickets, where you're sitting with two other people at the table that you don't know. And so I think it created a bit of an awkwardness. Um, The show went very well, and I think the people loved it. But for me, it was just like, ah, I I thought this show was going to be better. I thought it was going to be fun. It was just like, ah, it was annoying that it didn't go so well. And then the next day was Montreal. Montreal, I mean, fucking Montreal. Hey, le tabarnak de Calis, de crise de ciboire, the tabarnak de Calis. Montreal, it's the, I mean, it was the best show. Oh, it was just the best show that, 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 that I've ever had. It was unbelievable. Uh, Lise asks the question, were they eating at the same time? Lise, yes, they were eating. at. The, were they eating at the same time? No, I don't think they were, actually. I think in Quebec, they were just drinking. They might have been eating. I'm not sure. Just snacks, basically. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it, that's the thing. And then we had two days off. We went to go watch a hockey match. Of course, we went to go watch a hockey match. Go, Habs, go! Um, 
after the sh let me show you a picture from the show in Montreal uh, uh, on stage afterwards with my mate Roly Asal who opened for me. Um, it was just, it was 1,200 people at the Olympia, L'Olympia à Montréal. It was outrageous. The show was outrageous. I mean, I had to stop the show a couple of times because people were shouting shit out to me. Somebody was sh just shouted out like, Paul, I love you. It's like, this is like rock star shit. You don't do this to comedians. It's what you do to rock stars is you shout shit. It was unbelievable. I had to stop the show. And I was like, at some point, I almost said, guys, shut up. Like, you've paid to come and see a show. I need to give you the show. I can't just sit here and enjoy, like, fucking let me do the show. So it was outrageous. It was such a good show. Um, ah, Montréal, uh, merci. It was unbelievable. Then, uh, a couple of days later, we went to Toronto and uh, we, we went to the Niagara Falls. We took a, a, a rental car and rent, you know, and landed at the airport, drove an hour and a half to Niagara, uh, which to be honest was, I mean, disappointing. I, I don't think I've ever been more disappointed in my life thinking that a place was gonna be, it, I mean, it was shit. I mean, the falls are all, are all right. They're, I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not that amazing. They're only 50 meters high. Um, uh, here's a, a photo of the, the, the falls. I mean, I guess if you're on the boat that, that's on the bottom, then it might be more impressive. But I was like, yeah, all right, cool. It's, I mean, I've seen, put it this way, I've seen nicer waterfalls in my life than the, the, than the Niagara Falls. I wasn't that impressed. What was funny was the city around Niagara Falls was horrific. It was like a shit Disneyland from the 1970s. Here's a couple of pictures of what was going on. It was just like this. It was just... It was just shit. The city around it was, look at this, like Ridley's Believe It or Not. Like, it was, <laughs> it was awful. I don't know how else to say it. I mean, the city was shit. It was, I mean, whatever. They've just, they've done the very North American thing of taking a natural, beautiful thing and ruining it with the city that's around it. Ah, I've been to waterfalls, like, you know, in north of Vancouver. They're amazing. Been to waterfalls in Ile Maurice, Mauritius this summer. Ah, it was, they were great. Anyway, the show in Toronto was amazing. I don't know what happened. It was almost as good as Montreal, but with 300 people. So one quarter of the room in this comedy club called Yuk Yuk's. Ah, Toronto, amazing show. I didn't even see the city during the day. We got back from the Niagara Falls into the city. It was dark. We left the next morning at 6 a.m. to go to the airport. It was dark. So I never saw Toronto during the day. Uh, we arrived in Edmonton. Oh, Edmonton. Oh, the worst show of the lot in Canada. I don't know what happened in Edmonton. I, I mean, honestly, the show was fine, but it just, first of all, uh, we, it, the show was in a shopping mall in a place called West Edmonton Mall. You need to Google this place if you have time. It's fascinating. It's a shopping mall, like the biggest in Canada. I think the second biggest in North America. And in it, you've got like two mini golfs. You've got an attraction park, like a, a, a roller coasters. You've got go-karting, you've got an ice rink, uh, you've got a pirate ship, uh, you've got an aquarium. It's a, it's out, it's ridiculous. The, the shopping mall is ridiculous. You've also got a comedy club in there and a hotel. So we stayed in the hotel in the shopping mall and did the show <laughs> at the comedy club in the hotel. We did spend a bit of time, we, we had fun go-karting uh, before the show and I fucking destroyed it, I killed it. Number one, um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm good at go karting. I enjoy it because I enjoy Formula One. Like, there's, a, there's my little, uh, my little picture. But slag completely nailed it, crushed it, and the, the, the teenagers that were the two other ones, they were like, "Oh, how did you go so fast?" I'm like, "Because ah, I'm a bit of a legend, mate." Uh, <laughs> but the hotel. Ah, oh, if you didn't, if you don't follow me on Instagram uh, and you didn't see the, the state of the hotel room, uh, basically, uh, it was themed. The hotel has different themes. There's like a space theme, rainforest theme. We had the Roman theme. Uh, and this is me. Basically, there was a, there was a, there was a, where is it? There was like a, a hot tub in the room, which I've never had before. So that was amazing. Like proper big hot tub where you could fit at least three people, five if you're trying in the hot tub. Uh, I can imagine some dirty shit has gone on in those hot tubs. Uh, and then there was also a round bed uh, I'd never had a round bed. How do you sleep in a round bed? If as soon as you turn over, you fall off out of it. 
It was kind of weird. Um, and there was a, also a, a mirror on the ceiling of the bed because you know what's happening in that bed. Uh, who's having that much sex in Edmonton that they're having to rent out a fucking... <laughs> so, of course, I had a jacuzzi with uh, the bubble bath and uh, a, a Roman goddess looking at me. Well, not really looking at me while uh, I'm having a bath. It was very strange. It was... It was... It was... <laughs> But let me tell you, um, the Edmonton, it was weird. It was weird. Like the show, it was in a comedy club in a mall. So it went as well as a comedy club, but the room was like half full. We didn't have very many people. I think out of the 250 people that were supposed, or that the place holds, we had maybe a hundred. And they were all, again, sat individually. There was a lot of people on their own. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a tough show. I had a I had a tough time uh, making them laugh, and I was just like, oh, come on, guys, like, come on, come on. So Edmonton wasn't that great. Calgary uh, the next day uh, was great. Calgary was a fun show. Uh, I had been to that room before. I did that show in Calgary uh, in the same room uh, in 2018, and I don't have any pictures of it. Uh, but the 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 place was great. I had a great time in Calgary. Took. Um, Manu, my light and sound guy, Manu, Manu, and my manager, Adam, uh, to Denny's uh, next to the hotel. Uh, Manu had no idea what Denny's was. Look at that beautiful man, but he's so fucking French with his scarf, isn't he? Um, and uh, and yeah, he he enjoyed a nice Denny's. Ah, oh, the waitress there was amazing. Uh, Adam, uh, my manager, tried to win some things um, at one of those claw machines that they had at Denny's, except the claw machine didn't work, so he didn't win anything. <laughs> uh, Calgary was great, and then the next day we went to Vancouver, and oh, Vancouver! Honestly, the show, <laughs> for those of you who are in, in the room, um, uh, I don't, uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. I had a rough time, almost as rough as Edmonton, the difference was there were people that showed up to Vancouver, but the room, oh my God, if you don't follow me, the room was, it was a bingo room, basically. Uh, here is Adam sitting, waiting for the show. Uh, it was, it was a, it, I mean, it looked like a bingo room in a race course, basically. It was a hippodrome. Uh, so there's the stage, if you can call that a stage, uh, with the speaker, the one speaker. And the, the room, I mean... <laughs> The backstage was basically visible to the whole audience. You can even see it there. There are the chairs where I was sat backstage. Um, oh, I mean, the room, it, was, it wasn't a fun show. And plus I had to do two in the same night because Vancouver, you sold the first one out. So we decided to open a second one. And the second one uh, was almost empty. So um, uh, it wasn't almost empty. It was about half full. Uh, so Vancouver was a rough couple of shows for me. And it was... Oh, the hotel was shit as well. I am very sensitive to light, okay? I can't sleep when it's light out. Uh, there are curtains on the window in this hotel room, which are there. However, there is a skylight, which there was no curtain of. Also, the fire alarm went off at 7.30 in the morning, so that woke us up. What was the other problem with the hotel? Oh, it was on East Hastings Street. And if you, if you know Toronto, or Vancouver, just type in East Hastings Street, Vancouver <laughs> into Google and you'll understand where we were staying. Oh, it was outrageous. So Vancouver, listen, I had a rough time. I hope you guys enjoyed the show, uh, but it was, uh, it was difficult for me. And then uh, yesterday, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, we did Bordeaux. We, we flew back, we landed. I had one night at home and then the next day, <coughs> We went to Bordeaux and Bordeaux, as usual, the crowd were unbelievable. Uh, Bordeaux, every time I go to you, uh, to Le Femina, the show was incredible. It was a great show. I think I was too jet lagged to appreciate how great it was, to be honest. Because as soon as we finished, we went out for dinner and then uh, the team went out and had drinks until like four in the morning. And I just went home uh, and cried myself to sleep. <laughs> not even true. I didn't get to sleep till like 8 a.m. because I just couldn't get to sleep. I was on TikTok, YouTube. Uh, I watched the Formula One in Las Vegas because it was on at like six in the morning. So I didn't get to sleep until like eight. Um, so I didn't, I didn't enjoy Bordeaux as much as I should have, but it's because we're doing too much stuff. Um, but it was great. Loved the show. Uh, so uh, 
Yeah, Carlos Camejo says, what the fuck did you did they want you to do there? Announce the bingo, lol. Yeah, uh, Vancouver was rough. Uh, <laughs> Kristen Kim says, it seems un insulting to take a French person to Denny's. Yeah, but he'd never been. So we're like, mate, we're taking you to Denny's uh, at one in the morning. It was, I, when was that picture taken that I just showed you? Um, the picture was taken uh, at 9.35. No, it wasn't nine. Oh, it might have been. Uh, it might have been at 9.30. Yeah, all right, maybe it was. In my mind, it was like one in the morning, but I don't think it was. It's just, it's, it is the jet lag. Uh, does Manu ever get his name mentioned without the Manu Manu? No, he doesn't. Um, <laughs> should we ask, should I call Manu and see if he liked Denny's? Should we, should we ask him in French? We'll see if he, I'll ask him in English, okay? Uh, if he, uh, if... <laughs> If he, if he, if he enjoyed Denny's, let's, let's, uh, let me, um, this, let me FaceTime audio him. FaceTime audio Manu Gordier. Starting a FaceTime audio call to Manu Gordier. Mobile. I mean, he's at home with his wife. And I'm interrupting him. Let's see if he answers. <laughs> oh, you know what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. 9.20 p.m. I bet, he's, I bet he's getting a bit of action after being away for 10 days and then back away. No, he's not available. He might call me back. If he calls me back, <laughs> we'll ask him. His name is Emmanuel, but for some reason, I it's just Manu Manu. <laughs> um, uh, George of the Jungles, the good thing about Vancouver is that we were able to say hi if we wanted to. Wasn't thousands in line to say hi. Yeah, this is the advantage, to be honest, um, of doing small shows like Vancouver is that I, I can hang out with the audience afterwards and speak to you guys. Unfortunately, in a place like Bordeaux, it, it's not very possible because it's a thousand, one hundred people. And if I wait... I'll be there until four in the morning. Uh, so usually, here, listen, if you guys want to speak to me after a show, here's the technique. You wait until everyone's fucked off. Uh, <clears throat> and then usually, maybe ha half an hour, 20 minutes. If you can wait 20 minutes or half an hour, this is a big show. And I don't really have any small shows coming up. Um, so uh, if you, if you want to speak to me afterwards, uh, and we're not like, we don't have an urgent dinner reservation or some shit going on, um, then... Uh, you can speak to Adam because he'll be with me. Uh, you find him and you go, hey, uh, I want to say hi to Paul. I just go up to Adam and say, fuck the wall. And he'll be like, all right, cool. You can, uh, you can, you, we'll, we'll say hi. Um, just because it's difficult to say hi to a thousand people. Speaking of upcoming shows, tomorrow we're in Lyon. Lyon. And it's, oh, I can't wait because normally Lyon is amazing. Uh, at Bourse de Travail, it's going to be a thousand seven hundred people. It's going to be amazing. Lyon. Uh, then uh, the day after tomorrow, I've got a day off in Lyon because I'm not coming back to Paris to then go back down to the south. Because on Wednesday, Thursday, we're in, uh, wait, Tuesday. Tuesday's Lyon. Wednesday is off. Thursday is Aix-en-Provence. Then it's Grenoble. Then it's Avignon. And then it's Montpellier uh, finishing on Sunday. And then I'm back home next Monday and fucking doing the live again next Monday. Oh, it never stops, does it? And also, don't forget, le Zénith à Paris, les Parisiens, merde. Uh, the 6th of January, uh, we need, we, we're, we're, we're fucking, we need people. No one's talking about le Zénith uh, because the show is bilingual. Traditional media don't want to speak to me. And so normally when you do le Zénith, you have like radio, TV interviews, all sorts of amazing shit going on in the media. I have nothing because no one wants to talk to me because it's a show that is bilingual. So I'm going to have to, you, you guys have to get involved. Uh, you're going to have to help me spread the word. Uh, I will be making videos specifically so that you guys can spread the word uh, about le Zénith coming up in January. Uh, Willem, fact, meeting you in Toronto was great. Mate, Toronto, Toronto was another level. It was amazing. The comedy club was great. Uh, it was great to meet you as well. Um, it was, f it was fun. Um, uh, Olivier, beau, vas-tu faire des spectacles en France en langue anglaise après ton dernier spectacle bilingue? Uh, Olivier, the plan, 
uh, after this, for now, is to do shows only in English. Okay, that's my plan. And will I be doing them in France? Yes, at some point. I won't start them in France. Here's the, here's the problem with doing sh only English shows in France compared to everywhere else. Number one is some jokes are not going to work in France. Uh, play on words, silly reference jokes to English culture or English speaking culture um, that you might not have references to. That's number one. Some of the jokes won't work. Number two is France, people coming to the show know who I am. They've already followed me for three shows and my all the rest of my career for the last seven years. Whereas in the UK, in the US, Australia, no one knows who I am. No one's ever heard of me. And so the show has to kind of start again from the beginning, introducing myself. Hi, my name's Paul. I'm English. I've been living in France. Joke, 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 which I've already done for a French audience. So we'll see. I'll have to figure out how to balance those two things. But yeah, of course, I'd love to do the shows uh, in France uh, at some point. Um, style pass. You need a word for the for the day before yesterday and the day after tomorrow, like vorgestern and übermorgen. <laughs> übermorgen. So uber. So morgen is tomorrow. So übermorgen is the day after tomorrow. I love that. I'm going to start using that now. Uber morning. Uber matin. Uber demain. Uber, Uber tomorrow, whatever. Yeah, day we don't have a day, the day before. You're so fucking efficient, German people, and your language is like, und wie viel makes the language very, very pragmatisch? <laughs> Uber, okay, I love it. Yeah, le, 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 how do we say that in French? Hier, avant hier, et après demain. It's almost one word, if you stuck it together. Uh, uh, Red Becky, I hope you've made a good amount of money too for all these amazing efforts you're putting in non-stop. No, I'm not fucking making any money. It's a discussion for another time. Uh, but listen, the, the, shows, the shows in Canada obviously uh, cost way too much money because uh, it's not only my flight and hotel, it's uh, Manu, my light and sound guy, uh, him and Adam. Just to put it into perspective, the internal flights in Canada. So we took four or five flights from uh, 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 Montreal, Toronto, Edmonton, Calgary, Vancouver. Uh, just that was 4,000 euros. Uh, just the internal flights. That's not the international flights, Paris, Montreal, and in Vancouver, Paris, or the hotels. So <laughs> losing our asses on uh, the international tour. Um, listen, what I will do is once this whole tour is finished, uh, I'll let you know. I'll let you know how much money I made out of the whole year. Because um, I think it would be important. Right now, I've got no idea because the money comes like six months after the date has happened. So I'm getting paid now for a show I did in fucking July. Um, so it's difficult. I don't know is the answer. Um, so it's not... Um... Oh, oh, Pascalou, j'ai vu la photo de ton show en pub Fnac Spectacle dans le métro pour le Zenith. Bra, bra. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is exciting. I've got adverts in the metro. Um... There's, there's, there's posters of me in the metro. Uh, 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 I don't know. I've got a list of the metro stations where they... I, there's, I don't know. I think it's in like 100 metro stations in Paris. What I'm going to have to do is figure out a way to get you guys involved in the posters. Like maybe you take a photo and you share... I, there's got to be something fun that we can do with the posters and not just have them there. Misha Luna says, get Adam to contact the media. Misha, not only has Adam contacted the media, my press agent that we're paying uh, called Aurélie has been contacting the media and uh, my producer has been contacting the media and her communications employee has been contacting the media. But no one gives a fuck about Paul Taylor! So that's why we're going to get you involved. Um, uh, 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 um, ah, Grow Patches, seeing you in Ottawa was great. Brought a bunch of colleagues from work who really enjoyed it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I had a great time in Ottawa. It was super fun. Mm. Um, 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 what was I going to talk about? There was something I was I was thinking about. Oh, yeah, also Brussels. 
Uh, Brussels, the Belgians. We've decided to film, or I've decided, let's be honest, uh, to film the show, this tour, Bisou Bay, uh, in Brussels on the 15th of December, uh, which is super exciting. The reason I chose Brussels, a couple of reasons. Number one, it is almost the last show. Uh, it is one, two, I have three shows after Brussels. The next day in Lille. Um, oh, Lille is going to be something else. Lille. Lille, here's the thing. Last year, when I did my show So British ou Presque in uh, your city, uh, I had such a... I mean, this was two years ago. I had such a good time. I was like, oh, merde. Je suis déçu de pas avoir capté le spectacle ici. I wanted to... I was like, ah, oh, we should have filmed the show in Lille. But... Because we were doing London, I was like, ah, it kind of makes sense that show number two is filmed in London. Show number three, the discussions were there to do it in Lille. And I was like, ah, yes, but I prefer Brussels for the storytelling. Let me tell you why. So technically Lille is after Brussels. So that excuse doesn't. That anyway, we're doing uh, Lille Nancy uh, on the Tuesday, the 19th. And then the final show is at Le Zenit. Um, the second reason I want to do Brussels is because it's uh, the third country that I'm filming my shows. Show number one, filmed in Paris. Show number two, filmed in London. Show number three, filmed in Brussels. I feel like that is a cool trifecta. It's cool. I enjoy, I like the concept of, of doing the show, um, uh, the filming in three different countries. Uh, Brussels as well, European Union, the UK, we left Brexit, there's just a thing, there's a thing to talk about, there's a just, for me it's like, it's kind of a fuck you to Brexit, it's like, oh, we're gonna leave the, the European Union, are we? Well, fuck you, I'm gonna film my show in the heart of the European Union, so fuck you, um, that's uh, another reason, and also, the other reason is this show has been an international tour, more so than show number two, which we only really toured in Europe uh, in a couple of places. Show number one, we managed to go to China uh, and uh, Canada and Australia, but we didn't do 20 countries. This year, we've done 20 countries and the 20th and final country is Brussels. So uh, that's why I wanted to film the show in Brussels. So we've added a second show in Brussels. Um, uh, show number one is sold out. It's at 8 p.m. Show number two is at 10 p.m. Uh, so if you're coming to Brussels, there are tickets available, lots of tickets available for show number two in Brussels. Um, I've just gotten a text back from Manu Manu. Uh, so I think we should call him. Let me FaceTime audio him. Hey, how are you? Hey, Manu, Manu! <laughs> oh, t'as la forme, toi, ça y est. Ouais, je suis en direct euh, sur YouTube. Mais non. Ouais, et euh, il y a des gens qui ont des questions pour toi. Ah ouais? <laughs> yeah. Number one, the question was, how was Denny's for you? Denny's? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> je, peux parler, je peux répondre en français ou pas? Bah, bien sûr que tu peux répondre en français. Bah, c'est pas bon, hein. <rire> <rire> oui, L'avantage, c'est qu'on peut manger à n'importe quelle heure, mais bon, tu t'attends pas à un truc de ouf, quoi. Non, mais c'est quand même une institution. C'était, t'as mais... vécu un truc de ouf au Canada ah, mais... chez Denny's à 22h. <rire> J'étais dans un film de Quentin Tarantino. Euh... Ah, c'était trop bien. <rire> de, de qui Quentin Tarantino. Tu sais, ça fait un peu les brasseries. Euh, des de, 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 de qui Quentin Tarantino. <rire> Quentin, you mean Quentin Tarantino? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> ouais, Quentin Tarantino, uh, Maria Carré, quoi. Ouais, super. Ouais, voilà, tu vois. Amy Winehouse. Voilà. <laughs> Amy Winehouse. Um, uh, uh, Lise nous dit uh, merci Manu de rétablir la vérité. Um, parce que j'avais big up uh, Denis. Uh, I said that Denis was uh, amazing. It was fun. Uh, whatever. Um, uh, Lise est d'accord avec moi. Alors, il y a deux personnes. Euh, qui disent, euh, ça doit être un, un, une blague, euh, une private joke entre français que j'ai pas compris. Ils disent, hé hey Manu, tu descends Ah bah oui, c'est un, un sketch des, des inconnus, je crois. Ouais, c'est ça, c'est des inconnus. Ah, je pensais que c'était un truc avec ton prénom, genre Manu. Oui, bah c'est oui, oui, avec mon prénom. C'est euh, un sketch où justement, t'as un mec qui s'appelle Manu qui est à l'étage et t'as des gars qui arrivent en bas. Ouais, Manu, tu descends, pourquoi faire Parce que c'est ton test. Hein. Et c'est pour les gens qui sont nés dans les fin 1900, c'est tout le monde connaît. 
<rire> je l'avais jamais entendu celle-là. Euh, et la deuxième euh, question euh, par rapport à Denise, c'était, euh, euh, je sais pas où elle est, mais c'était une personne qui a dit, euh, demande à Manu euh, s'il rentre toujours dans son jean après euh, Denise. Non, j'ai pris 3 kilos en venant du Canada. <rire> j'avais acheté un super bouson kawaii. Tu te rappelles le bouson kawaii J'étais trop fier et tout. Je peux même plus le mettre, je suis dégoûté. Du coup, je le revends sur Vinted. Non, tu ne le revends pas. Ah bah si, je suis obligé. Non, je non Arrête, je pensais que c'était une blague, que tu rentrais plus dans... Un kawaii, ah c'est pas serré. Ah si, c'est serré. Bah oui, il est serré, mais attends, je te dis. <rire> je te jure, il est serré. Je... Prends-moi la photo, j'ai envie... Ah non, la honte. Ah non, la honte. Bah si, ah euh, tu, euh, hey, tu m'as déjà envoyé une, fo une photo de toi torse nu, euh, <rire> comme blague. Donc tu vas m'envoyer une photo de toi qui rentre pas dans ton kawaii, parce que ça, ça existe pas. C'est impossible. Ah, je te jure, ah, je te jure. Non mais tu sais c'est les kawaii, les grands kawaii là, tu sais un peu un oracle là. Oui mais justement, comment tu rentres pas dedans Bah, est... bah j'arrive à le fermer mais je suis tout serré dedans. <rire> <rire> bah il faut perdre du poids. Bah ouais, mais je compte sur toi pour m'aider parce que t'as vu j'ai aucun, aucune volonté donc... Euh... Ouais, il y a, y a Déa qui dit bacon, poutine, burger, let's go. C'était ah, exact... ça, ouais. exactement ça. <rire> Pendant 12 jours, c'était que ça. Ah c'était horrible. Évidemment tard le soir et tout donc euh, bon. Ouais, alright, cool, bah c'était tout, c'était juste des questions parce que les gens, ils me croyaient pas quand je disais que Danny c'était incroyable, ils disaient non, non, demande à Manu euh, s'il te plaît, euh, si c'est si, si bien passé, parce que j'ai montré la photo de toi qui était tout content euh, avec le menu, euh, j'avais pris le menu en photo euh, avec toi derrière en mode j'ai ramené un français chez Danny's. Yeah, aussi perd des paysans en tout cas, ça c'est sûr. Uh, nice, alright, bah écoute, on se voit demain euh, dans le train euh, pour euh, Lyon. Bah ouais, donc là t'es en direct avec tout le monde, c'est ça Je suis en direct avec tout le monde, là, ouais, tout le monde... Euh... Ouais, T'embrasses tout le monde, même si euh, je ne sais pas qui c'est... Euh... Non, bah ils sont, euh, écoute, ils sont 213 à regarder en ce moment, donc tu dis euh, bisous à deux... Il y a, et bah, ici, t'en connais un, c'est Florian Beaufreton. Euh... Ah bah oui, ouh, Flo Il fait, <rire> hey Manu, Manu, Manu euh... Yeah Alright, bah on se voit dans le train demain, alors. Ouais, allez, je t'embrasse te, pas. Allez, bon, bisous, bye À demain. Ciao There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Manu, Manu Um, <laughs> he doesn't fit in his anorak. <laughs> oh, we've all we've all ga gained some weight. Uh, I gained about a kilo and a half. Um, it was three. Now I'm back to. I have to eat more. I can't. I can't. I'm filming the show in a month. Fuck me. I lost 12 kilos this year. I'm not going to put on another seven. I, I. 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 It just. It's. It's. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Um, right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think it's about time that we did some terrible translations, yeah? The concept of the show, of terrible translations, I just enjoy seeing translations that are awful across the world. Uh, and I've created an email address that you can send in uh, to me, like translations that you find. Uh, the email address that you can send them to is terrible translations ftw at gmail.com that's terrible translations ftw at gmail.com uh, and uh, every week we go through some of the translations that you found uh, so let's do it it's been two weeks so i might have quite a lot of uh, emails to come through uh my new thing is to not look at the mails before um before we do them because i don't want to prepare you know i, I, I want to be surprised as well as you right so let's do this uh Can I get the phone up? There we go. Right, first one is from Simon Roguet. Simon Roguet. Um, he goes, hi, hope you're well. Found this one at the entry of a marina in Santa Lucia while on a boat trip. Boat trip. I printed the right circle and put, put it on my bedroom door. Have you spotted how they translated knots in French? Neither did I. Have a good time in Montreal. Hope to see your next show in the Caribbean someday. Cheers, Simon. Well, the closest to the Caribbean that I've got is Ile Maurice, which is completely not in the Caribbean. So the closest I've gotten to the Caribbean to do a show, my hour show, is probably New York. That's probably the closest. <laughs> I did a show in Guadeloupe one time, but it, was, it wasn't my show. Right, let's see the photo. Okay, so we've got welcome to... Iggy Rodney Bay Marina, four knots, no wake zone. Call on channel 16 for, for, for assistance. Okay, so four knots. I don't know how you actually translate four knots into French, as in the speed. Um, the speed limit is four knots. I imagine it's ne, but I don't know if that's how you translate knots into French. And then no wake zone. I cannot wait to see how they've translated this. Awake is waves, basically. The wake is is the, the 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 fucking what's it called? 
I think it's like the, not the speed of the waves, but the, the, la puissance merde, the power, the, the powerfulness, Jesus, how do you say powerfulness? Um, uh, Liz confirms it's N, uh, N-O-E-U-D-S, okay, uh, and no, wait, what's wake in French? I don't know what wake is, I don't know what wake is in English, I know that you can get caught in a wake, like when you're surfing and stuff like that, can you? It doesn't matter. Let's see what they've translated it to on the right hand side. Bienvenue à Igirol Bay Marina. Quatre knots. Okay, so they didn't even translate knots. Wait, hold on. No, they didn't translate knots. Non se réveiller zone. Of course. Of course, they've literally translated it as non se réveiller. Alors, dans cette zone, on n'a pas le droit de se réveiller. Uh, <laughs> what would you, how would you say... Uh, how would you say um, 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 wake in French? It's the it's the wave that the propellers make, right? Wakeboarding. You know when you do exactly. Anushka says wakeboarding. Um, it's like the 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 the. You know when you wakeboard, you're 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 basically surfboarding on the wake of the boat. It's the it's the effect of the wave that the boat has made by displacing water. So I don't know what that's called. Um, uh, in 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 a in a. In French, la traînée, le sillage, interdit de laisser un sillage. Okay, no wake zone. Oh, is that is that what that means? It means like if you're on a boat, don't go quickly. Okay, great. I think somebody should email rbm at igmarinas.com and say, hey, by the way, your sign is uh, mistaken. Great shout, Simon. Nice work. Um, right, Usama Flis. Uh, hi, Paul. We found this sign in Strasbourg. Not. A really bad translation, but made me remember the embarrassing stuff your daughter says when mixing French and English. Enjoy. Um, right, not a bad translation. It won't open properly. Right. <laughs> okay, yeah. Rue de la Rappe. Uh, the, 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 he, he, the, what Usama's relate. <laughs> um, reminding Jesus Christ. I can't speak anymore. Jet lag. Um, what he's referencing in my show is my daughter. Um, once, once said to me in the street, Papa, j'ai pas envie que tu me beat, because I said, hey, I'm going to beat you home because uh, we were racing. And I'm like, oh, daddy's going to beat you. And she goes, j'ai pas envie que tu me beat, uh, which is awkward because translated back to English, that means I don't want you to dick me. This one, if you read it in English, Rue de la Rape. Okay, well, that's reassuring. Uh, it's a street name, Rue de la Rape. I don't even know what rap means in French. I know that the verb rape to rape is to grate cheese. Like, when, quand tu rapes du fromage, you rape the cheese, you grate the cheese. But la rap, I don't know what la rap is in French. Somebody enlighten me. Um, <laughs> uh, good work, Usama. Nice work. Right, Natalie C. MS Teams, terrible translation. Okay, Microsoft Teams, gratuit. Le latest MS Teams version. Congrats, congrats, folks. Well done. Microsoft. Oh, for fuck's sake. By the way, my colleague is a she, and she is single, but I'm not sure she would appreciate. What? I don't know what she means by that. She is a she. Colleague is a she, and she is single, but I'm not sure she'd appreciate. All the best. Natalie, I don't know what that means, but Microsoft Teams, what a bunch of idiots, Microsoft. Occupé gratuit le 8 novembre, as opposed to free on the 8th. The person is occupied, and they will be back. They'll be free. Their time will be free on the 8th of November. Gratuit le 8 novembre. Oh! Dickheads. Um. Ta -na -ta -ta. Uh, Nicolas Girardin. Petite faute dans Il faut sauver le soldat Ryan. Oh, okay. Hello, Paul. Dans le film Il faut sauver le sol soldat Ryan, uh, Saving Privates Ryan, ils ont recréé une publicité pour l'alcool français Suze dans le village à la, de la fin du film. Mais pour la base... Line, l'ami de l'estomac, ils ont écrit es « estomac » avec un « h » comme en anglais. Oh Ce n'est pas une « terrible translation », mais ça m'a fait sourire en le voyant. Bonne con continuation. Et merci pour les shows dans les deux langues. C'est compliqué pour toi et ça restreint ton public. Mais quand on comprend les deux, ça amène encore plus de situations drôles. This is true, uh, Nicolas Girardin. Uh, so, what he's saying is « in saving private Ryan »« Fucking hell, what a reference I love this !» There's an advert for Suze, which is an alcohol, and underneath, um, they've said, l'ami de l'estomac, 
with a CH, as in friend of the stomach. And istoma in French is not written with a CH. Was it ever written with a CH? See, that's really interesting uh, because um, for that to have slipped the head decoration, uh, attends, l'ami de l'estomac, I'm going to Google it right now. Excuse, l'ami de l'estomac. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so that literally, that's exact, because... I don't think Suze would have had an... Yeah, see, that's, it, it is written with a, with a C. L'ami de l'estomac. Now, what's weird about that? Why would they have added an H to it? Because I imagine the people that they would have had doing the advertising on that film, like the decoration, they would have been local French people. They wouldn't have brought in people from the US, I don't think. And also, if they're basing it off of real French advert, why would they have made that mistake. That's really interesting. Also, would the thing not have been sponsored by Suze? Because I'm pretty sure if you're doing an advert like that, like you have to have the... I'm reading a thing off of a, a blog that says, Dans la dernière partie, on dit Suze sur le mur de la maison. Si vous êtes observateur, vous remarquerez une grosse coquille de la part des décorateurs Ils ont écrit ça à l'anglaise avec un H. Ouais, OK, all right. Fucking fantastic. This is, I mean, this is the kind of shit I'm looking for, ladies and gentlemen. Just a little, I mean, that, that is the most specific reference of anything I've ever seen in my life. Mate, great work. Uh, who sent me that? Who was that? Nic Nicolas. Great work, my friend. Ah, oh, nice. And maybe it was a, it wasn't a mistake, but a, a deliberate uh, for people to shitpost. You know what, Anne? I would almost say yes to that, but at the time when save, internet didn't exist, as in like uh, viral internet didn't exist. I'm sure the internet existed. No one had internet. When was Saving Private Ryan? 1996? Hey Siri, when did Saving Private Ryan come out? Saving Private Ryan was released on the 23rd of July, 1998. Oh, 1998. Uh, way before social media. Now, and I think a film might do that. Add a mistake in so people talk about it on social media. It creates a buzz. Every buzz is a good work. Um, anyway, uh, hey, Ekrens says, uh, vraiment hâte de te voir à Clermont. Mais moi aussi, j'ai vraiment hâte de être à Clermont. Um, par contre, personne vient au spectacle. Donc, uh, parle-en autour de toi. Because no one's coming to Clermont-Ferrand. Uh, we've got a big room and it's about half full. Oh, um, right. Next terrible translation. Let's go. Sandra Tessier. Uh, what time is it? Oh, we've got some time. Uh, Sandra Tessier just sends me a link to a Facebook group. Okay. Let's see what that says. Vu sur un autre groupe, tellement vrai parfois. Avocat nature. Natural lawyer. Ah, <laughs> uh, I love it. This has got to be. Where would that be? That the, that the French would be better than the English. Oh, in France, of course. What a dickhead. What a stupid sentence, Paul. Obviously, this is going to be in France somewhere or in a French-speaking country. Avocat nature translated to natural lawyer. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Good work. Uh, Sandra, thanks for sharing that. Uh, I've got Rhiannon. Rhiannon Turner. Found this in a French Facebook group. Oh, it's the same one. Okay. Uh, Kristen Kim, natural lawyer. Okay. Okay. A bunch of you, apparently that made its rounds on social media. Susie Withers. Oh, Susie Withers. Hello. Uh, where do we even start with this one? Okay, cher client, vous devez réserver ou appeler un taxi. Merci de composer le 06, bla bla bla, 24 heures, 7 jours sur 7. Expensively customer. <laughs> you have to reserve or call a taxi. Thank you to compose. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mm. The only thing correct in there, it's not even correct because they've still put 24 hours out slash 24 and 7D slash 7. In English, we just do 24 slash 7. Uh, the only thing that's correct is the phone number in there. Expensively customer, literally translated from it. Cher client. Oh, God. And also, isn't that misspelt in French? Shouldn't cher client be cher with an S at the end? Like cher client. Share because there's multiple clients. 
should not be. Vous devez réserver ou appeler un taxi. Is that a question? Vous devez réserver ou appeler un taxi? Merci de composer le. Because otherwise, that doesn't. That whole, the whole, even in French, the thing is shit. Merci de composer. Thank you to come expensively, customer. Expensively. It's not even expensive, customer. It's expensively, customer. Oh my god. It's not even properly translated. You have to reserve a, or call a taxi. You have to. <laughs> Thank you to compose. Make us some music. I don't know if in English you can compose anything else but music. Um, oh god. I love it. Too good. Susie, this is unbelievable. Maybe we should call the phone number. No, don't. Don't spam them, please. Uh, oh, and it's Joe La Taxi. The company is Joe La Taxi. Reference to what song? Who's that? Is that fucking... Who sang that song? Joe, Joe La Taxi. Oh, this is how bad my French references are. Oh, God. Um... Uh, 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 uh. They, they, Anushka says they really used Google Translate. I don't think they did, Anushka, because I reckon. Uh, let me get the text from this. Can I get the text? I think if I save the photo, uh, I will save to camera. Uh, would you like to add to photos? I would like to add to photos. Now let me go into my camera roll uh, without showing you my nudes. And uh, let me uh, copy the text. Go on, son. Go on, son. Have it. I bet you Google Translate does a better job than this. Right, there you go. Copied. Copy. Now let's go to uh, translate.google.com. Tabarnak. Enter the text. Paste. 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 Allez. Paste. Tabarnak. Callis. And let's translate that. It's, it wants it to translate it into Kurdish, which is interesting. Um, right. Proof that Google Translate is not that bad. Dear customers, you need to book or call a taxi. Please call. I mean, syntactically, it's incorrect. If you need to book or call a taxi, please call. But it got please call in Merci de Compos... So they're not even using Google Translate. They're using Jean-Michel Translate is what they're using. Ho <laughs> oh, ho! Oh, absolute legend. Vanessa Paradis, thank you very much, is Jola Taxi. I was gonna say Brigitte Bardot, but I'm like... She <laughs> Uh, all right, Linda Correct uh, is in the house. Uh, oh, the avocat again, mate. So I guess the 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 avocado one went round the went all around social media. Hello, Paul. Hope you're doing well. Here's a fresh, terrible translation it's taken this morning in the R E R A. Le R E R A. Cheap plug. You and the wonderful dickheads legends are all invited to come and see me and my group, the Improvokers, doing my improv in English in Paris on December 9th. Maher, I didn't know you did fucking improv improvisation. When is uh, December the 9th? Mate, I'm doing my show in Rennes. Uh, I would have loved to come and see you. Uh, but another time, the Improvokers. Go see Maher Ahamane. Uh, right, let's see what the RER... Okay, let's, let's... Oh, God. I am refugee. I have four brothers and I do not work. Help me to survive with my family. God bless you, you and your family. Wishes you a good day. One or two euros or one ticket restored. <laughs> ah, it's not funny, but it's funny. It, up until then, you go, okay, the person's a refugee. They don't have, you know, they don't speak good English, right? I am refugee. I have four brothers. I am a refugee. I have four brothers and I do not work. That's correct. Help me to survive with my family. Uh, God bless you, you and your family wishes, God bless you, you and your family wishes you a good day. It's the, t <laughs> it's le ticket resto that's funny, just because le ticket resto is such a French thing. Those of you who are not French and don't live in France, the concept of a ticket, oh, 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 hello, no, go away. The concept of a ticket resto is that the French government pay companies to subsidize a little meal voucher, as if you're Oliver Twist uh, in an orphanage, and you get this little meal voucher, and you, it's, what, what's amazing about it is when you're an employee of a company, they pay a certain amount of uh, lunch for you. So you get these little ticket resto, which used to be literally in a ticket book, in like a checkbook that you would take 
and you would go and pay your meal, whatever it was, eight euros. I can't remember how many, what the price of my ticket resto at Apple was. Now they have it in like a card, basically. Ah, oh, here's a funny story about les tickets resto um, that you'll love with my manager, Adam. We were in the airport flying to wherever we were going to. I can't even remember now. And um, it was to New York uh, for the show over there. And uh, while Adam was earning good money at Apple, uh, before he started working for me and earning nothing, uh, he, you know, he would buy himself nice things because uh, Adam likes nice things. Also, he has a lot of friends that work in a lot of nice companies. So Adam had like a very posh wallet from a very posh brand in France uh, on him. He had a very posh uh, uh, like traveling bag, uh, like a very expensive posh traveling bag from a big brand, right? And what was the other thing? Oh, and a carry-on suitcase that's super posh, like the most expensive ones that you can find. Basically, he's walking through the airport like fucking uh, Anna Wintour from uh, Vogue, right? From Devil Wears Prada. It's exactly the same thing. He's walking through the airport and we get to a place where we wanted to... Um, uh, what do you call it? We wanted to get a coffee. So he orders a bunch of things, right? And uh, he goes... Don't worry, I've got this. I've got this. Because, you know, he's got all the nice bags and he doesn't, you know, he wants the person behind the till to think that he's paying for all the all the, all the food, right? Um, <laughs> so he tries to pay with his ticket resto and it gets declined. Oh! <laughs> it gets declined. His lunch vouchers got declined because there was a beer uh, that he decided to buy in the mix, so it got declined, ticket resto. And I was like, mate, how much of a tramp do you look like with your Louis Vuitton bag or whatever, the expensive shit, and you're trying to pay with a lunch voucher, and that gets declined. Ah, oh, it was hilarious. So anyway, ticket resto is that. And the translation in this for a ticket resto, one euro or two euros, or one ticket restoring. Thanks a lot, one <laughs> ticket restoring. Oh, uh, to be fair though, that actually makes sense because restauration, you are restoring yourself. So actually, technically, eh, it's got some etymology behind it. Um, right, good one, Maher. Go see his improv, improv show. Uh, Melanie Gandon says, uh, Cadeau de mamie en France. On doit aimer cuisiner les épluchures. Scrap cooking. Marc... Deposé. <laughs> no, no, no. Scrap cooking. And it's a marque déposé. No, they have. Oh, my God. My wife is going to love this because she used to. That's what she used to do. My wife, she used to déposé des marques. She was a, a lawyer that would. I don't even know what déposé. Register a trademark uh, in English. So they registered this trademark in 2005 and they didn't even think about checking what scrap cooking meant in English. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Oh, it's because, I, I imagine it's because of scrapbooking. Scrapbooking, you know, when you take a scrapbook, a book of scrap, a scrapbooking, scraps is basically, like, you know when you say a word too much and you lose, you forget what it actually means. Scrapbooking is when you have a book and you put scraps in there. Shit, basically. Uh, it's it's the, the leftovers, les épluchures. So scrap cooking, maybe that, to be honest, maybe it is, maybe it is from, let me, before I make fun of these people, let me uh, double check uh, what scrap cooking is. Just, just in case they actually are using les épluchures and scraps to cook with. Scrap cooking. No, it's just a, it looks like it's just a, a company that, that makes cooking stuff, scrap cooking. Here we go. Marc Francaise Fabricant. Here we go. Black Friday. Yeah, let's go. Black Friday, uh, which will last for two weeks in France. I mean, you'd think nowadays with what's going on uh, in the world and, you know, everyone will use every part of their, the food that they're making. You'd think that they would start, it is the same brand. No, they, they, it's, they're just like fully serious about scrap cooking. Oh, God. Good work. All right. How many more have we got? Uh, 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 let's get back to uh, the phone. Uh, Melanie, thank you very much. Oh, that was from today. Melanie sent that today uh, during the show. Hi, Melanie. Hi. Uh, and Raquel says, brunch au café à côté de l'Apollo à République. Uh, 
Uh, I've, you've sent this one a hundred times. We've talked about it, I think. Uh, brunch, sucré, sweetie, sal salé, salty. I've talked about this already, I think, that they've gone sucré, sweetie, as in sweet, not sweetie. Hello, sweetie. Hello, hello. Hello, gorgeous. Hello, sweetie. Mm. Um, no, sweet or salty. Sweet, uh, 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 yeah, well, hold on. How would you say that? Sucré, sweetie, salé, because salé is salty. You can have a salty brunch. Sweet, oh, it's just sweet, sweet and salty. Sweet and salty, yeah. Boisson chaude, hot drink, plus juice. Yeah, so it's just a salty, isn't it? No, sweetie. And it's massive as well. Oh, oh. Um, Pascal, he didn't understand le truc marrant avec la marque déposée. It's just because, uh, it's, the tra it's just that they've bothered to, tr to, to register a trademark Scrap cooking, which is not what they meant. I, I, I know that they were probably thinking it was cool, the, the, the name scrap cooking, but they've gone to the bother of actually registering the trademark and also advertising it that they've registered the trademark is hilarious. Uh, that's it. That, that was the joke. Oh, salt, savory. Yeah, of course. Sorry. Yeah, savory. I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost in my own translation. Savory. Yeah, okay. Sweetie and salt. Well, you can say salty though. Well, savory. Yeah, savory is better. You, when something is salty, it's sali, which is what they're saying there. But literally sali, like with salt in it. Can you say that? Hold on. Salty. Yeah, savory is better, isn't it? I've forgotten about the word savory. Is, that, is, that, is it sweet or is it savory? Is it sweet or is it... Uh, in, we do say salty, I think, in English. Uh, I want to say that English speakers will say salty sometimes in, that, in the context of savoury. But don't quote me on it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, right, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you. That was great. Uh, uh, we've, oh, we've still got a few more minutes, innit? 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 We've got a few more minutes. Uh, what questions? Uh... What questions do you have? Ask me some questions. Uh, yeah, savoury is more correct. Okay, these chips are too salty. Salty is just lots of salt. All right. I don't think we consider salty a thing to advertise. Hey, this is salty. I've been out of England for too long or an English-speaking country, which is why I'm leaving. I'm going away. I'm never coming back to France. Oh, nice 3DP super chat. Get out of here. Thank you so much. Currently working as an export manager for a French brand, and they chose they choose for sales administration the email affaire arrobas. I've got a state of my hair, Jesus Christ. Um, so the email address affaire arrobas sales administration. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Currently working as an export manager for a French brand and they chose for sales administration. Oh, sales administration. Affaire. Is it just me or am I not getting, am I not an understanding that what the problem with that is? Affaire. I mean, it, that would be business at whatever the company is. Affair, as in cheating. Oh, affairs. Ah, <laughs> sorry, I was reading it in French. I wasn't reading it in English. Oh, goodness me. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, export manager for a French brand. Oh, that's amazing. Hey, please send any business inquiries to affairs. <laughs> Arrobas Nicolas.com. Oh, oh, good work. Oh, you know what I love about how do we say affair in French? Is it aventure? Is it the same as it is in Spanish? Una aventura. I think it's aventura. No? In which language is affair adventure? Because I fucking love that uh, as, a, as an actual translation. It might, be a, it might be in Spanish. No, it might not even be in Spanish. I'm confusing French and Spanish. Let's do affair uh, in English. Uh, consent. Une affaire... Une liaison, une aventure. Okay, it is in, it is in French, une aventure. <laughs> hey, we're going on an adventure. Let's fuck. <laughs> uh, uh, what is it in Spanish? Eh, como coño, anglais, espanol. 
a hacer romantically una aventura. Okay, great. There you go, French and Spanish, easy to learn together. Latin languages for the win. Um, de liaison, yeah, dangerous liaisons, right? Une aventure extra conjugale. I like the little. <laughs> Here's what I find funny about extra conjugal. It sounds like um, something um, fun. Not fun, but it sounds like it's positive. Extra conjugal. It's like you guys are married and you're, 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 it's like extracurricular. It's what I'm hearing. When you go to school in England and you do the after school stuff, it's extracurricular. Like, what are you doing for your extracurricular activities? So you could say, what are you doing? Are you, are you having any extra con conjugal? What's conjugal uh, in English? There's got to be uh, a good word for that. Uh, Frances, English. Uh, conjugal. Conjugal. We say conjugal, do we? Fucking hell. Marital. There you go. That's the better one. Uh, extra, extra, extra marital. Do we say extra marital? Maybe we do say extra marital. Um, uh, aventure ex extra conjugal. I mean, that's, that sounds to me like me and my wife going to Thailand on a romantic holiday. Ça, c'était une aventure extra conjugale. Because when you're, you know, in a marriage, you don't go to Thailand every day, right? But if you're going on a romantic relationship with your wife, c'était une aventure extra conjugale. C'était extra. <laughs> oh, too good. Too good. Apparently, we do say extramarital. Jesus, this is how shit my English. Hey, hey, thank you, internet. You're teaching me English. Oh, goodness me. Um, <laughs> Sinon, uh, 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 what was, uh, there was someone that came up with something funny there. Uh, ah, un 5 à 7. Michel Luna, un 5 à 7. Um, what's funny is 5 à 7 in Quebec is l'apéro, right? So they've got a TV show. They, you know, they have their hockey matches uh, like every couple of days on TV in Canada, in Quebec, they've got the NHL, you know, they got the matches. Uh, they've got a show before, like the pre-game, the pre-match talk around the table. They call that le 5 à 7 <laughs> because it's literally from five to seven. But I think 5 à 7, like my mate Roly would be calling up his friends, be like, hey, est-ce qu'on se fait un petit 5 à 7 au bar Sainte Catherine? You know, like, let's go for l'apéro because it is, l'apéro is from five to seven. <laughs> Fucking five to seven is sexy time in France. Eh, hey, sexy time. De cinq à sept. In the morning or the evening? Oh, maybe. Both. Um, <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, that seems like a good place to finish on extramarital, extraconjugal uh, <laughs> affairs. Oh, this was fun. Uh, I'm carrying on for another hour. I'll be here for one other hour with the people that support me on Patreon. Uh, Patreon is a place where you can help support me as a creator uh, to help keep providing you with free shit on the internet. I pay uh, a lot of money uh, to, for different things that are going on. Uh, to, I mean, this whole studio cost 20,000 euros, but that's okay. Um, Patreon helps me pay all of that back and also pay my wonderful uh, team, uh, Florian Bouffreton, uh, on the editing uh, of my videos and the subtitling, my wife to help with the subtitle. Anyway, whatever, you get it. Patreon is a place where you can support the artist and I give you free shit. Uh, well, not free shit. I give you exclusive stuff, uh, which is another hour a week of happy hour. Happy hour? Wow. Yeah, remember when this used to be called happy hour? I should have still called it happy hour. No! because happy hour is now with the guest. It doesn't matter. You get extra stuff on Patreon uh, and uh, behind the scenes things, just great stuff. And you can buy me virtual beers in return. Uh, so if you want to hang out for another hour uh, and see all of the previous uh, 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 fuck the wall harder uh, episodes, then you can. Uh, and also you get early access to tickets in certain places like Le Zenith in Paris. Uh, uh, the f whole front row is blocked out by legends that follow me on Patreon. Anyway, uh, I'll be there for another hour. Uh, if you're not here for the next hour, thank you. I'll see you next Monday at 9 p.m. Um, uh, if you want to come and see the shows this week, we've got Lyon tomorrow, uh, uh, Aix-en-Provence on Thursday, uh, Grenoble on Friday, Avignon on Saturday, and yeah, 
at Montpellier on Sunday, as well as a bunch of other shows until the end of the year. Uh, the tickets are available on my website, paultaylorcomedy.com slash tickets. Uh, you guys have been great. Thank you so much. Um, Patreon, I'll see you in five minutes. I'm just going to go for a pee uh, and give my wife the code for the Uber receipts. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we'll see you guys next week. And the, the south of France, I'll see you guys this week uh, for the show. Cannot wait. Um, that's it. Bisous, bye.